What is going on, everybody? I'm Jabby Kawai, joined by Amber Trujillo. And we're looking at is Vsauce's Is Earth Actually Flat? This is an older video. This is from December 4th, 2014. 35.6 million views. I'm a big fan of Vsauce. I wish he uploaded more often, but getting it less often makes each one more special. Mm -hmm. You know, he spends a lot of time on each video, I would imagine. You are not familiar with Vsauce. You haven't seen any of his videos, so this will be your first one. No, it's all good. Uh, I enjoy his videos quite a bit. You guys, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications. Vote this up. Let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching, why you're subscribing and upvoting. Follow Amber Trujillo, who is very much part of the science community herself. And uh, Vsauce, there's the links in the description below for everything. Fun a little fact for you guys. Amber works with Bill Nye, the science guy, at a yes. company that was started by Carl Sagan. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Planetary Society. Super cool. Check them out. Hey, Vsauce. Michael here. In 2003, researchers did the measurements and found that Kansas is in fact literally flatter than a pancake. What? Of course, the Earth is not flat. The Earth is round. Otherwise, travelers would be falling off the edge all the time. Right? <laughs> Wrong. If the Earth was not a ball shape, but was instead a flat disk like this plate, well, with the right density and thickness, living in the middle could feel pretty normal. But as you moved toward the edge, gravity on a disk Earth would slightly skew, pushing at a greater and greater angle back toward the center. My friend Nick from Yeti Dynamics put together this great simulation. The person and buildings obviously aren't to scale, but check out how such increasingly diagonal gravity would work. Although this is a flat disk, it would feel to a runner headed toward the edge like they were fighting to climb up a steeper and steeper hill. Like San Francisco. The building foundations behind the runner reflect how you would have to build structures closer and closer to the edge so that people living in them always felt like down was at right angles to the floor, the way we feel it on our big round earth now as you approach the edge <laughs> he's like making a point to say scary. on our big round earth because he wants to make it very abundantly clear he doesn't believe the earth is flat even you two was like uh just so you know the earth is not flat <laughs> it's, that's an archaic scientifically disproven concept okay round earth now as you approach the edge things would get scary remember this is a flat earth but it would feel like a sheer drop off what's really cool is that contrary to the don't fall off the edge fear on a flat world because of gravity the scary risk would actually be falling away from the edge and rolling all the way back to the center oh. once you stepped over the edge instead of falling off into space you'd be able to relax it would be a nice level place this model of course neglects the fact that such a planet shape would be impossible Anything as massive as the Earth, shaped like a flat disk, would, under its own gravity, naturally collapse. There's a flaw in his thinking because... Oh, I can't wait to hear this. He's assuming the people that think the Earth is flat also believe in gravity. <laughs> back into so. a ball. This is why in outer space, everything more than a few hundred miles in diameter is round. Or so we've been told. Uh, what if gravity isn't real? What great. if the Earth is, in fact, flat, and science has been wrong all along. It's a misconception that Christopher Columbus discovered that the Earth is round. Virtually every scholar and major religion in the West accepted Earth's rotundity since at least the time of the ancient Greeks, who, for instance, had noticed that boats disappear bottom first when sailing away, and as you walk north and south, stars pop into and out of view. The misconception that only a few hundred years ago, lots and lots of people believed the Earth was flat likely began in the modern era as a sort of insult. A, well, your people recently thought the Earth was flat, so why should we believe you now? The smear was repeated and published so often it became accepted as historical fact. Flat Earther became synonymous with anti-science. It might seem flat over short distances, but over longer ones, well, the Earth is pretty darn curvy. The Verrazano Narrows Bridge, connecting Staten Island and Brooklyn, had to be designed with Earth's roundness in mind. Its two towers, separated by 1,300 meters and perfectly vertical, are nonetheless 41 millimeters further apart at the top 
then oh. at the bottom. You know, the only reason I know about this bridge is because I didn't pay attention whenever I went to New York. I only know about it because of Metal Gear Solid 2. Because of Earth's curvature. In the third century BC, Eratosthenes measured the different- That's how you say his name? <laughs> I've been saying Eratosthenes. 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 They had way cooler names. Eratosthenes. Okay, I gotta remember that. So Eratosthenes, he, do you know, you know what his claim to fame is, right? Or at least in Carl Sagan's book, uh, Cosmos. You remember? Was it him or was it Pythagoras, whatever his name is? That did that what? the poles. It was him. He discovered the circumference of the earth yeah. using sticks and shadows. Sticks and shadows. That was it. That's all he used. He came within like really close, like a small margin of error, the, the circumference of the earth. Mm. He was pretty darn close. Yeah. Differences between shadows cast by poles in Back Thebe. Eratosthenes measured the differences between shadows cast by poles in Syene and mm. Alexandria to calculate more than 2,000 years before rockets and space travel, the circumference of the entire globular Earth. That's crazy. With, for the time, impressive accuracy. Yeah. Word got around that the uh, Earth was a round uh, shape uh, after that. <laughs> but in 1906, Wilbur Glenn Balava became head of a slightly bizarre religious sect that pretty much ran the city of Zion, Illinois. Valava believed that the Earth was actually flat, and he enforced flat Earth teachings in schools in Zion. He also enforced that belief on really anyone who entered the city. Valava believed not only that the Earth was flat, but that the sun was only a few thousand miles away from Earth, not 93 million. He it, it sucks that he's being remembered forever as this idiot because like at the time he knew what he knew and he was like it's like that's what everybody else said you're remembered for the rest of history as that guy questioning Eratosthenes and or well, how did he say his name Eratosthenes. forget it <laughs> he also believed that the sun was only 32 miles across not 860,000 mm. he sounds crazy or does he uh -huh. you see the same phenomenon Eratosthenes measured could be explained by a flat Earth <laughs> if the sun were only a few thousand miles away and 32 miles across. The math would work out the same. Huh. Today, with the power of the internet, modern day flat earthers have picked up where Volava left off. They have quite good explanations for any evidence you throw at them that the Earth is round. Is that misspelled? Circumnavigation <laughs> is really just a flat circle path. The round shadow Earth casts on the moon during a lunar eclipse could also be made by a flat disk. Time zones are caused by a spotlight sun. And remember how gravity would be totally different on a disk-shaped planet? Well, they argue that gravity as we know it simply doesn't exist. The flat disk of Earth is merely accelerating up at 9.8 meters per second. As for all of the photos and video evidence we now have that the Earth is round thanks to space exploration, Big science. well, all of that material is completely fabricated. A hoax perpetrated by Big Globe. Big Globe, I got it wrong. I thought I was gonna say Big Science. If you're a flat earther, you, you could just take a trip down to a Griffith Observatory on a, like one of those Friday evenings when they have the mm -hmm. star uh, gazing, whatever. These guys bring out their huge ass telescopes that are just hobbyists. And even with these telescopes that are not like science groups, grade and government grade telescopes, you can take a look at planets that are in our solar system. I don't know how you explain that shit. <laughs> it's there. Yeah. You could see it with your naked eye. I don't know if you know, I used to work at Griffith Observatory I and they that. also have a, a great pendulum. First thing you see when you walk in that, so, that kind of proves. So when is it? When is, when is the thing for people who live or want to visit Los Angeles? When is the, the stargazing? It's once a month, right? Yeah. And it d depends if there's like a conjunction or something coming up. You can always go on their website and they always have their events kind of lined up. Yeah. I think you're just referring to the star party that they yes, have Yes, that one. Yep. Yeah. That's so yeah. I would just look up, you know, especially events that come. Another really cool one mm -hmm. uh, to go whenever there's like an equinox or something mm -hmm. when we're changing seasons. They do a great talk there. Okay. And that's really fun to go check out if okay. you've never been. Space agencies, airlines, globe manufacturers, they are reaping the rewards of our ignorant belief that the Earth is actually round. They know, of course, that it's flat, mm. and they're hiding that truth from mm. us. Is it merely a coincidence that the logo used by the Flat Earth Society is a projection of Earth centered on the North Pole and also happens to be the projection used by the United Nations? <laughs> Are these people for real? 
probably not most of them, but this is the crux of Poe's law. Uh -huh. I don't know an this. adage that states that at their extremes, parody of extremism and sincere extremism are difficult to distinguish. Uh -huh. Although clever, flat earth theories are predominantly ad hoc explanations, excuses made up on the spot that only address one issue and don't fit all the evidence. Science, of course, rejects a theory if a better one fits more of our observations, but why the egotistical obsession with our observations? A cosmic ray particle could use the very same scientific method we use and conclude that the Earth was in fact flat. You see, at speeds near the speed of light, time slows down and lengths contract. One way we know this is that unstable muons created in the upper atmosphere by the collision of cosmic rays with the atmosphere should mostly word. decay before reaching Earth's surface. But yet, we detect a lot of them down here because their crazy fast speed literally means that from our perspective, their physics runs according to a slower clock. And to them, the distance they have to cover to the surface during their short lives is, from their perspective, much, much shorter than it appears to us. Have you heard of that? A muon? I've never heard of that. He said it's a cosmic ray. So there's different types of radiation in the universe, and cosmic rays are normally uh, caused by some cosmic event and they're highly radioactive. Again, Griffith Observatory, there's a cloud chamber in mm. there where you can see cosmic rays, how often they they strike the Earth. Because I've heard of neutrinos mm -hmm. and those are flying through the Earth all the time. Mm -hmm. The way he was describing the muon almost sounded like a tachyon. A tachyon is the opposite side, okay? It's faster than the speed of light. It's a theoretical particle that no one has actually discovered. Can I think it's your favorite thing in the world. It is my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> a tachyon particles, which have not actually been discovered, can vary in speed, but cannot go slower than the speed of light. Whereas these muons apparently can vary in speed, but they're very near the speed of light. So, there. I have questions. I don't have the answers. <laughs> That's about it. I gave you everything I got right there. <laughs> if you were a cosmic ray proton traveling at 99.9999999 9991% the speed of light, Earth would appear to be only 17 meters thick wow. in the direction you traveled. Interesting. So Earth is flat to them, but round to us. Interesting. It is ball shaped to some observers and flat to others. Interesting. There doesn't appear to be a single most correctest in all circumstances answer. Susan Hack compares knowledge to a crossword puzzle. New answers interweave with old ones. They all reinforce one another. The clues are the questions we ask, and the way the answers fall into a predetermined grid, well, that's our confidence that we're on the right track. But that doesn't mean that one day there will be a finished puzzle, a complete answer. Recall the New York Times famous 1996 crossword puzzle that came out the day before the US election between Bill Clinton and Bob Dole. The clue for 39 across was pretty crazy. You seemed to need to be able to tell the future to answer it correctly. It simply said, lead story in tomorrow's newspaper. Blank elected. Well, that blank could be Clinton or Bob Dole. Oh, and wow. who's to say which one until tomorrow? Oh, There's wow. no way to know. And it all works. But as it turned Brilliant. out, the answer was both. Clinton oh. okay. or Bob Dole. <laughs> I thought he was going to say they both worked. Okay, okay. Well, obviously Clinton won. Fun fact, Bob Dole had a commercial that came out after he lost the election. It was some ad, I forgot what it was, that paid him to be part of it. Something happened at the end of the commercial where he goes, I, I just can't win. <laughs> <laughs> like that's how the ad ended. Oh my God. It was the most random ending for a commercial and everyone at school is making fun of it. No matter which you wrote in, all the other clues fit. For instance, a black Halloween animal could either be a cat or a bat. bat. Yeah. Who made Our that knowledge about the outside that world brilliant. might be the same. A puzzle with no answer key, just the reassurance that the answers we think we know fit together. So mm. they're probably correct. Though this there's always the possibility applies to everything. The answer to this, one this, this is literally the theory of yeah. everything. Okay, is it? Right, yeah. right here. Do you know what the theory of everything I, is? No, no. So we have classical physics and we have quantum physics, right? Okay. Theory of everything is making the two of those work together. There's things on the quantum level and things on the classical level that do not make any sense. Gotcha. So the theory of everything is trying to find those puzzle pieces that make them fit, fit together. All right. Yeah. All right. Blue or all of them will fundamentally not have a single definite satisfying answer.
answer. The puzzle may be playable forever. I like what Richard Feynman says about this. Some people say, how can you live without knowing? I do not know what they mean. I always live without knowing. That is easy. How you get to know is what I want to know. You know? And as always, thanks for watching. That was fun. That was really fun. I, I can't remember where I, I saw this or heard this, if it was Carl Sagan or if it was Neil deGrasse Tyson or something else entirely, but there was this famous scientist who whose uh, wife was dying and um, the moment his wife passed, the clock stopped working. Mm. The clock that was next to his wife's bed stopped working. A religious person would be like, oh my God, my wife's soul stopped the clock. And this scientist was like, oh, it's out of batteries. And just change the battery. I think out. that was Feynman. Okay. Yeah. I'll believe you because I, I don't remember. I remember that. <laughs> but that, yeah. uh, the point there is that it, it's either one, like depending on your perspective, it's like either it's a spiritual thing or a scientific thing. Mm. I have obviously elect to believe the scientific thing, which is it's just a coincidence that that happened. But both could be true depending on your perspective on things. Weird example. Anyway, your final thoughts before we close out. That was brilliantly done. I feel very embarrassed that I don't know who Vsauce is. And uh, it know. was <laughs> executed perfectly. Yeah. He, he really kept you going. He He's really good at like really wordplay for yeah, sure. Pulling you in. Yeah. No, I love it. You guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Do subscribe, bell icon, all notifications. Vote this up. Let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. I'm Jabby Koi. This is Amber Trujillo. Peace out.